the Star Wars connection with the podcast, the way you brought it out in the <clears throat> in the opening monologue for the first episode was great because it it wasn't like a name drop. By the way, I was in Star Wars, you know, one of the biggest right. franchises of all time in movie history. Um, you actually you, you brought it home to the podcast because, as you mentioned at the start of this interview, it's about the future technology, and you were part of a very yeah. special moment in filmmaking time. You know, in that role as Jar. Yeah. I think that's really important to know. You know, a lot of people think I was just the voice actor, and um, I don't think that's fair. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that's fair to, not just to me, but I don't think that's fair to the process of filmmaking. You know, regardless of whether you loved Jar Jar or hated him, he was important in the canon of what was coming next, right? Episode one dropped in 1999. That's, you know, the last year of the 20th century. Yeah, man. And here was this pioneering process that pretty much took over the 21st century, right? To slight everyone involved or to not be aware of the history of that. And I have to say Lucasfilm is, is partially to blame here as well. Um, because I don't think they focus too much on the the process of making the character. Um, and I think that is what should have been the star when we were talking about Jar Jar. Everyone was just playing catch up from the backlash. And um, although I understand that, I think the converse argument to it is filmmaking has changed and we changed it. And the reason why you hated the character was because the process was successful. You believed that this character existed. Mm -hmm. And that process takes an actor and it takes the animators. And there is a symbiotic relationship that has occurred that has now changed movies. Right? Even now, um, there's this rift between animators and Andy Serkis. And it has nothing to do with Andy Serkis. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Andy Serkis's performance, which is absolutely brilliant, enhances the technology that he's connected to. It's mm -hmm. this wonderful symbiotic relationship. But we still haven't gotten the narrative right. We still are talking about how, no, it's the animators. No, it's the actor. And the animators and the actors are creating this character together, and they just want to make stuff. Perhaps there wasn't enough focus on the process of uh, Jar Jar and the physicality of Jar Jar, which was you with the technology. Um, I guess to the casual film fan, they would credit the birth of that technology to Gollum. Yeah. Uh, we shot in 97, which was, I think, about th two or three years before Lord of the Rings actually started. But I have to say, like, where we fell down... Peter Jackson and Rita learned from. And the reason why Gollum was so successful was because they understood what happened with Jar Jar and they corrected. You know what I mean? As well as having a phenomenal actor in Andy Serkis and phenomenal story with J.R.R. Tolkien. What do you think those you know corrections I mean? were? They knew how to market Gollum the right way. When Gollum came out, Peter Jackson was like, Andy Serkis is Gollum. Dead up. It was Andy's performance, Andy's performance, Andy's performance, right? So everybody locked on to Andy Serkis as the actor, right? I yeah. did not have that. Everybody was talking about Jar 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 Jar. They weren't talking about me, the actor playing this character, right? So they were talking about Peter Jackson was just like, made sure Andy Serkis was at the front of it, right? Which gave Andy Serkis a career, you know? Um, and then, you know, Peter Jackson did King Kong and Andy Serkis was in that. And then subsequently, you know, Andy was um, directing second unit on The Hobbit, I believe. He, I think he directed second unit on... Um, uh, Return of the King, and then on The Hobbit. Yeah. But uh, I, I might not have that. Career. And he's got his own studios but, now. In West and then he has London, the Imaginarium. Yeah. Yes, he has the Imaginarium. And because he was able to have a career as this guy, he's able to perpetuate the technology. Right. 
um, and subsequently was asked to do more. I was never asked to do anything else after Jar after Jar Jar, right? Because no one um, knew who I was. When I was um, done, I would go out and you know I would try to get work, and people were just like, "Wait, that what? That wasn't a cartoon. That wasn't you." No, it was actually me. I was in there. No, that wasn't I. It wasn't acting. And at the time, there were no behind-the-scenes DVDs out, and I couldn't be like, look, it was me, see? Mm. But Andy Serkis is credited with being the first, and he wasn't. And it's good that he wasn't, because, you know, the first one through the gate always gets the bloodiest. So I took all the hits. Would you like to be in another Star Wars film? Uh, no. I'm He's good. You said no to me a good year or two ago, and I just wondered, yeah. now it's alive yeah. again? Had had that changed? But no. no, it hasn't changed. Um, number one, I've never been asked. Um, which, you know, I would like to have been asked, even though I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say no. But, you know, Andy Serkis was in Force of Weekends, and yeah. I was like, I was like, wh Why? I mean, I know why, because he's, a, he's great. Like, I love Andy Serkis, but you are doing all of this to bring all of these original folks back to the fold. Why not ask the guy who was the originator of the thing that you're asking this guy to do, especially since I'm in the family? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I think Lucasfilm is especially now that it's Disney, has made a very strong effort to distance themselves away from Jar Jar and me subsequently that um, no one even thought to ask me. Um, but uh, probably not. Like I, I think Star Wars now is something very different. And I think what it was when I did it was something very very special and like i said I, I wouldn't want to change that experience i think that brings me on to this final question now from one of the subscribers which is from sant fan and he brings up jar jar's fate after revenge of the sith but actually mm -hmm. we now have canon fate for jar jar after return of the jedi did, did you see that and and what did you make of it is that the one from the book? It's from the book, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. Chuck Wendig's novel, Star Wars yeah. Aftermath, yeah, Empire's yeah, yeah. End. That's the one in the fountain and, and you know, the it's a very, it's a very somber, very dark um, eventuality for Jar Jar. Yeah, I quite liked it, actually. Um, it was, it was really dramatic. And I think, uh, I think a good idea to kind of sum up, I always, I always complain to George, like when I, when I realized that, you know, Sith was not going to have Jar Jar in it pretty much. And they were moving very, very far away from me. I always complained to George that I didn't get a good death. I wanted to like really be just hacked to pieces in, in some kind of way, you know? Um, and, and George wouldn't do it. So I was really, I was, and the interesting thing I think about Jar Jar is everybody keeps looking for an explanation for him, which is, you know, human nature. And, you know, I'm going to have a, a big part of my book talking about why this is what it is, because I've thought a lot about it. Um, and I like all of these theories that, um, try to explain the reasoning for Jar Jar. You know, we talked about the Darth Jar Jar, I think, before. And then this one where, you know, he becomes this tragic character who's realized he's been manipulated and loses his mind. And everybody's trying to come up with this reasoning. You know, everybody's trying to come up with a, a finality for him. And, and in that effect, I think it's cool. I think that's interesting. And I quite like all the, from a storytelling perspective, and so someone who is who does that, you know, for a living, I, I really find that interesting. And I find the impetus for it interesting as well. Like why human beings are really trying to figure out what this Jar Jar thing was all about. So yeah, it was cool. 
It is amazing, isn't it? A, a character that divided opinion so much, yet people just don't want to let go of him, do they? Really? I've been trying to let him go for so me- for so long, but there there is something out there in the zeitgeist of the Star Wars universe. They want to keep him around. They want to forget about him. They hate him, but they just want to keep him around. I don't know why. I get you know Twitter messages every day about is Darth Jar Jar real or is he really a Sith was this the thing I have a bet with my friend that he was da, da, da. are you going to be in the next episodes da, da, da. It, it just it blows my mind all the all the hits I've taken over the years for Jar Jar people still care I, I, I it blows me away it blows me away but if you really thought this through, Ahmed, because you've got three albums to produce, you've got a play <laughs> starting on November 10th, you've got a podcast series, you've got yeah. everything else going on in your, uh, in your career, and you've got, your, you've, you've got a wife, by the way, and, and a child I I, as well. And, and now child. you're going to write a book as well. Have you really thought this through? Yeah. You know how it works? Deadlines. You put deadlines on everything. If you get a deadline, right? Then you can just, you can, it's really, it's re- see, this is why I'm a futurist. You look at the future and you say, this day in the future, I will be finished. And then you really, very pedantically, very unfun, boringly put together a schedule that you can follow. <laughs> and, and that's what I do. So hopefully, sometimes I don't meet deadlines, but most of the time I do. So yeah, in the world of, polymath organization deadlines <laughs> well i have got one more thing for you and you're gonna hate me for it but i feel like it's almost a tradition a tradition when we chat on these uh these uh these skype google hangouts facetime i'm sure yeah. other formats are available as well um it's tradition that i uh i perhaps annoy you by getting you to do, get you to do stuff but i wondered if you could bring closure official closure to the canon closure by reading uh-huh. that little passage from the book that we discussed earlier. Okay, let me see the Chuck passage. Wendig's novel, Star Wars Aftermath, Empire's End. I, I've not read the book, but apparently a character called Marpo comes across yeah. Jar Jar. And I believe back on Naboo. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Already I see, already I see text mistakes. Um, Jar Jar would never refer to himself in the third person. <laughs> So I I will change it. I will use artistic license as an actor. Go for it. Okay. Misa making some uh uh-uh mistakens, the Gungan says, explaining why he isn't wanted anywhere either. This is his Naboo. Misa think I helped the uh uh-oh empire. He stares into the distance, suggesting he knows more than he's saying. It's over. Closure. How does it feel? Closure. That's good. I still wanted to die. I still wanted to like find a some a dagger in the back. You know, very you know Shakespearean kind of an ending. But yeah, this is cool. This will do for now. Maybe something else. Someone else will buy Star Wars eventually. It's kind of sad. It's a, it's a. If this is yeah. the real ending for Jar Jar, it's it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's very sad. It's very sad. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a dagger in the back as you would no, it's probably like, prefer. Ah, ah, ah. I want to jump off something. But maybe that's to come. That's a future novel, uh, perhaps. Maybe it's just Snoke throwing them off. Oh, you've just started. You've just started. Da, da. You, the comments da, now will be flying, yeah. flooding yeah. through. But um, yeah, thank you uh, very, very much, uh, Ahmed. Uh, as always, and cheers, mate. Thank you so much, man. Always, always. I'll see you next time, I guess. Episode four, that'll yes, be. Sir. Dun, dun, dun. I was Yoda. Um, Can you just uh, say that again, Frank, please? I was Yoda. Wow. I was Yoda. I was actually Yoda, Jar Jar, and Random Guard all on the same day, all at the same time, all in the same takes. <laughs>